Kyle Mohan Racing. All right, I'm on the shop floor here. It's a little dirty, but I just got in a couple new products, a couple new things for my personal Formula Drift RX-8, uh, the three-rotor setup, and I figured I would talk about them a little bit because I think they're pretty cool. Um, and even as a rotary enthusiast, I didn't know all of this uh, was easily obtainable, but it's a pretty awesome aftermarket lower intake manifold setup for OEM Cosmo 20B application or could be used with a lot of the modern billet motors as well. Um, and this is why it's cool. This is why I got it. This is why I like it. So I needed more fuel delivery. And one way to do that is add injectors. And we also were looking at our overall airflow. Uh, the OEM intake manifold wasn't perfectly equal length. And I was considering sending it out to extrude hone or doing some personal porting on it to open it up a little bit more. Um, and it's kind of ugly. So like on the MX-5, the OEM intake manifold, we shaved off a lot of the external ports, passages, bungs, cleaned it up and did a lot of porting work to it. When we built the RX-8, uh, I guess we were just in a little bit more of a rush and we I didn't have time to do all of that porting and that cleanup. But as it turns out, and uh, this has actually been available for a long time. They're just kind of rare. Um, Excessive Engineering, a company uh, I don't even know where they're based out of, casts these lower intake manifolds that are nicely shaped, equal length, very nice distribution for your air, and uh, they bolt up to an OEM Cosmo 20B uh, intake manifold upper half and obviously on the lower end to the motor. Pretty nice piece. Uh, the casting is, uh, I'd say, at least OEM quality. I did do some cleanup porting on it. And um, just so everybody knows, the intake to engine side was actually a little small. I think they based it off of FD3S uh, runners, which I guess does then lend itself to diverse applications. But in my case, we use the Cosmo ports, a uh, taller port configuration. So I did some quick porting and uh, opened those up. So I was able to get the same airflow uh, essentially that we were getting on the bottom half uh, as the OEM. But the main reason I got it, aside from the fact that on the main runner side, we're a little bigger, a little more equal, um, is the two, two biggest reasons is, uh, the equal length runners and the additional fuel distribution. Cause now you have nine or sorry, six injector ports with a total of nine when you add your primaries in versus the OEM, which only had three injector ports on the secondary and three on the engine in your primary application. So it gave you six. So now we're able to add three more injectors um, and optimize our fuel uh, flow um, for the capacity and the horsepower we need, but also optimize the atomization because uh, fuel injectors do operate in optimal ranges and uh, you can be too big or too small in either direction. So for both drivability and mid-range and then upper end horsepower, uh, we run two stages of injectors. So we got smaller injectors on the primaries and bigger on the secondaries this year as where in the past we've always just had to max everything out because we only had six injector holes and we run ethanol and we run a lot of horsepower and we run a lot of boost and we run a lot of nitrous so that means our fuel consumption and duty cycles were way up so for us this was a is a great addition and then uh, obviously fuel rails are a thing and i think you may have seen that sitting there uh, I wasn't even exactly sure how we were going to set up a fuel rail, but I knew I wanted to find one of these lower intake manifolds uh, for all those stated reasons. And luckily enough, Radium, who I love, they just make amazing parts, happened to already make an aftermarket fuel rail for this aftermarket three rail, uh, three rotor manifold. So really cool that a company like Radium not only makes components for the OEM manifold application and rotaries, but they even make a fuel rail for aftermarket intake manifold applications. And I would still consider the 20B engine rare, and then this 
intake manifold combination even rarer. So just kudos to Radium for having diverse applications available. And uh, I'm really excited to be getting this whole setup in the car. I think this will help with our tuning, uh, being that it's equal length. Um, and I think we may pick up some horsepower, at least on the top end, because we are going to be able to flow slightly more air through this lower intake manifold. And I think we've always been a little choked up on both the intake and exhaust side. So new lower intake manifold, welcome to the team. And uh, we got some more fun parts coming in, but uh, just wanted to talk about that. I figured we do rotary tech. And uh, even though, uh, you know, this is just for the personal drift car, it's a, a really neat component uh, that's available out there in the rotary world. And then a really nice uh, fuel rail in addition. So shout out to Radium and, uh, you know, uh, oh, cool thing about these uh, lower intake manifolds for aftermarket or custom builds one of the things they do offer is a shorter height manifold. So if you were building a 20B uh, that either had a low hood height or maybe was in a diverse application, there are shorty manifolds uh, out there in this same casting uh, similarity. Uh, you just got to find them. It took me a little while to find this one, but they are out there. You can, you can get them both in the full factory height, which I wanted or in the shorter application, if that was what you need. So this has just been a little KMR tech talk, uh, working on the race car, working at the shop, getting down on the floor. It's time to go get back to work. So I'm gonna go wrap on out of here so I can get this on the race car. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Check out the merch, more stuff coming soon as the Formula Drift season kicks off.